In the last decade, veganism has taken the world by storm. It has captured the hearts of many and completely transformed how they think. Hi everyone and welcome to The Green Lab Coat. If you enjoy living a healthy lifestyle backed by science, make sure to subscribe for more videos. Also, don't forget to hit that like button to help the algorithm. Glad to see you here. According to Google Trends, the United Kingdom comes in first place as a country with the most vegans, and Australia and Israel come in second and third. Stars like Billie Eilish and Mayim Balik have been forthright about ethical eating and their vegan diets. Unable to stand from the weight of the bodies they have been bred into. I'm making an argument that our obsession with what's most efficient is causing us to objectify other living beings. This has made many other industries not happy, and they're still opponents with the galore of arguments. Now, just to enhance our brains a little, we're going to learn a little bit about vegan history. Around 500 BC, humans had grown accustomed to eating meat. So when Greek philosopher Pythagoras introduced eating a meat-free diet, people didn't know what to think of it. He believed all living beings have souls, so he didn't eat meat or fish. Then in 1944, Britain's dairy cows had hit high ranks of tuberculosis. So Donald Watson, a woodworker, suggested that a switchover to veganism would be the healthiest option. He, like Pythagoras, believed animal life should be a lot more than being of service until being put on death row. So let's put our vegan lenses on to see what the term actually means. While you may think you know what veganism is, you may be missing the mark. Because vegan diets and vegan lifestyles are often misconstrued. While a vegan diet means no meat, eggs, dairy, or honey, a vegan lifestyle is so much more. It excludes animal exploitation altogether. So wearing wool, leather, animal testing, and horseback riding are a few things that are prohibited. It sounds a bit extreme, and the majority are against going to aquariums and museums. But all in all, the intentions of veganism are nothing short of honorable and should be commended. Four horses collapsed. One died in the last four months. When is enough enough? Over the years, the spread of yoga, hipster culture, and other famous documentaries have made veganism popular. As of now, news outlet The Guardian estimates around 79 million vegans worldwide. And a fun fact, plant-based foods grew faster than any other food in 2021. Also, the term veganism surpassed the word beef in 2016, and they're now steady competitors on Google. On the other hand, industries that aren't thriving at the news of this movement are industries like meat, eggs, and dairy. They've surely seen a decline due to the adoption of veganism, and in efforts to save their industries, they've pleaded with lawmakers to pass ag-gag bills. This means that taking a picture of a suffering pig at a factory farm is already a felony in some places. Now, one suffering pig doesn't mean the whole factory farm is corrupt, yet an undercover activist reporting crowds of animals in pain, agony, or discomfort who can potentially expose animal abuse can now be punished if they do so. How dare they do such a thing? Another example is BBC's Clean Eating the Dirty Truth documentary. Now, the star of the show interviews many experts and some influencers. And in the end, he criticizes each and every one for not having what he says is conclusive science. Now, when looking back at the documentary, Dr. Giles Yeo was condescending and self-righteous with each and every single person. Natasha says that, oh. He discovered that eating a plant-based diet free from processed foods can help to cure terminal diseases in the body. Unfortunately, his work is not recognized by the medical industry, perhaps because giant pharmaceutical organizations wouldn't be able to make any money out of doctors prescribing vegetables. Although the interviewee simply stated that the science seemed to be pointing a certain way, Dr. Giles Yeo did an excellent job at cherry-picking their statements in an organized way. It was later discovered that Dr. Yeo was funded by a pharmaceuticals company, Sanofi Aventis, a very popular company. They were looking to find the genetic basis for obesity. By finding this gene, they could say, obesity is genetic and we have a drug for it and that curing it with a simple diet is nonsense. Therefore, diets like veganism are also nonsense. That's a typical thing that pharmaceutical companies, if you can find a gene responsible for a certain outcome, then the idea is maybe we can find a chemical and intercept that gene action. 
I found that he was actually funded by uh, Sanofi Aventis. Regardless of the good morals that come with being a vegan, there are still skeptics, and some beg the question, why do some vegans look so sickly? And it's true. People who switch over to Whole Foods plant-based diet are strong people. But then you have those that switch over in an extreme way, eating only fruit for months at a time, only juicing or prolonged water cleanses are some of the ways a vegan diet has gotten a bad name. A lot of extreme vegans also come from food disorders. To turn around and tell people that the vegan diet didn't work or was toxic and deadly simply isn't fair. This isn't the true vegan diet. If you want to become vegan, you have to do it the right way. Now, a number of healthy vegans exist, and they've done so with a whole foods plant-based diet. The key is also to transition slowly versus crazy fads that will no doubt make you sick. Now, one of the biggest success stories is that of Bill Clinton. Now, when Clinton was still in the presidency, he was in the middle of a book tour. He started feeling a tightening around his chest that he tried to push through. Eventually, he had to be rushed to the hospital for a quadruple heart bypass. Now, prior to this, Clinton was known as a foodie with a fast metabolism. His hope of wanting to be around to be a grandfather initiated these lifestyle changes, and of course, the surgery as well. Now, this research eventually led him to the works of Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. Now, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn is a plant-based doctor with major breakthroughs in his medical career. So, being quick to take action, Bill Clinton became a vegan on his 65th birthday. He lost 30 pounds and boasted about his energy levels and feeling great. Now, Clinton then went on to inspire prestigious actress Michelle Pfeiffer. I go on this diet, and I'm curious now because of his claims. Two months later, I check my cholesterol. It has gone down 83 points. Is that right? And many other celebrities as well. Now, we have to give a disclaimer. Articles online have stated that Clinton gave up his vegan diet for a paleo diet. Now, after doing ample research and digging, I'm here to tell you that's not true, at least according to Clinton. Now, Bill Clinton partnered with a doctor named Mark Hyman, a doctor I personally follow as well. Now, Dr. Hyman believes in eating mostly plant-based foods with limited grass-fed meats. Bill Clinton was known to be a vegan who cheated from time to time, stating to eat fish once in a while. In an article on Big News, Clinton stated, quote, If I could get this, I'd be 100% vegan, unquote. This was as he sampled vegan nachos at a vegan restaurant. Now, Clinton is someone who is incredibly busy and always traveling. And it's my personal belief that he fell off the healthy vegan recommendation diet and became a bit of an unhealthy vegan. Now, vegan options are readily available everywhere you go, especially whole food vegan diets. A lot of these foods are best when you cook them yourself. When comparing his first interviews about going vegan to some that he did later on, it's clear that he wasn't being as strict with his diet as before. This is probably the reason Dr. Hyman recommended Clinton add eggs and fish back into his diet for those added nutrients. Now, given that Dr. Hyman isn't 100% plant-based, he believes it would give those lacking nutrients back into him. Still, Clinton seems to favor a vegan diet over anything else. He stated that after he eats salmon, because it's recommended by his doctor, he's just as soon without it because the vegan diet is what he likes best. Quote, I have more energy, I never clog, and I feel good, unquote, he says. So even though he's lightly added fish back into his diet, he's definitely not gone paleo. It's also safe to say that it wasn't the vegan diet that wasn't working for him, but rather he just sometimes lacked the power to do it the right way. Nevertheless, Clinton still has the respect of vegan and vegetarian industries because his meat intake is pretty limited. Now, going back to Caldwell Esselstyn, a heart surgeon at the top of his field, he felt that regardless of the state of the art equipment he was working with, nothing he was doing could prevent the next, quote, unsuspecting victim from succumbing to heart disease, unquote. He started doing his own research and found that the U.S. exceeded Japan in deaths from prostate cancer by 14,000. In 1958, the U.S. was two times bigger than Japan, but the deaths from prostate cancer there were 18. 18 total deaths from prostate cancer in Japan. Absolutely mind-boggling. He also found that in 1978, the breast cancer rates for Kenya was 82 times lower than that in the U.S. What these countries, as well as the Okinawans and other countries of exceptional health had in common, was that they ate no meat, fish, eggs, or dairy. This led him to conduct his own 12-year study, where yet another triumph was added to his life achievements. At the end of the 12 years, 
There were no additional coronary events with all participants. The average cholesterol decreased from 247 to 137. Nine patients entered the study with angina. Seven of them improved it or completely eliminated it. And then eight of the 18 participants had reversal of coronary heart disease. The six other participants who dropped out of the study that originally May 24 all saw CAD symptoms coming back. A subsequent study to this was later conducted with 177 patients, also done by SLC. 99.4% of them avoided any major cardiac event during the years of the study. Additionally, Esselstein was set to appear on the documentary mentioned earlier. He brought along three of his clients with huge success stories. Given how much credibility these stories would have given to veganism, Dr. Yeo, the interviewer, should have been open-minded, yet Esselstein's part never erred. It was later learned by Esselstein's research partner, Dr. Campbell, that Dr. Yeo was visibly upset when he saw what Esselstein had to present. Keep in mind, if money's involved, bad people will always try to bring down a good thing. Then there's the Great China Study, one of the most comprehensive studies of all time. Unbeknown to Esselstein, Dr. T. Colin Campbell was conducting the same type of research before they met. By studying the Cancer Atlas with Junshu Chen, which came from 650,000 researchers and studied on 800 million people, both men noticed an undeniable correlation between people with cancer and the locations they were in. In their own study, 6,500 people in 65 Chinese counties were followed for six years. What they found was that the data most closely associated with heart disease, cancer, diabetes, hypertension, and bad cholesterol was animal-derived protein. They had 94,000 correlations to diet and disease, and was cross-referenced in different ways to prove its credibility. Funny enough, both Dr. Esselstein and Dr. Campbell grew up on dairy farms, and both came to the conclusions that a vegan diet with low fats is almost always associated with lower mortality and lower risk of disease. Subsequently, this leads us to the subject of climate change and the impact a vegan diet has. It's no doubt our planet's environmental disasters have increased. Earth's average temperature has increased by two degrees Fahrenheit since the 1800s. This doesn't seem like much when it's one city, but when we're talking about this globally, it makes a big difference. According to Leslie A. Durham, a professor of environmental studies, one cow produces as much methane as 80 cars. The goal of CAFOs is cheap costs and high profits. So by slaughtering billions of animals each year, they're able to make this happen. Now, there's reportedly 2,000 CAFOs in the United States, but there may be more as the data is not conclusive. Now, so much land is used for food that will feed the animals, only to get a little output as far as what humans will actually eat of that animal. A quarter pounder of hamburger uses 460 gallons of water and 64.5 square feet of land. If we were to grow food crops for direct consumption, we can feed 4 billion people. Now, according to NASA, the last seven years have been the worst on record. If cattle was a country, according to Leslie A. Durham, it would rank third in greenhouse gas emissions. But by replacing beef with plants in the United States, we could decrease croplands by 90%, greenhouse gas emissions by 96%, and nitrogen fertilizer by 94%. Although many think that veganism is expensive, it's quite actually the opposite. Fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes don't cost much, but vegan transition foods do. This is talking about vegan cheese, vegan yogurt, vegan meat are some of these examples. But remember, these foods are temporary and are processed anyways. Once you get rid of these transition foods and go fully plant-based, the price will eventually come down. When making these steps to transition, you may be thinking, but what the heck do I eat? But there's so many yummy foods to feed the soul. Some quick rice pudding for breakfast, some tofu egg salad for lunch, and yummy vegan sloppy joes with mac and cheese and maybe apple pie nachos for dessert is an example of what one day can look like. You can find all these recipes on the website of Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. It's no doubt that veganism has grown exponentially. Opponents continue to disagree, but large population studies that are years long and have helped reverse heart disease hold all the cards. The veganism lifestyle cuts out any form of animal exploitation and can be seen as extreme by some. But if it all gets too hard, you can simply follow a vegan diet rather than try to live out the whole vegan lifestyle. From standing up to animals, to improving one's health, and to very important protecting our planet, you'd be hard pressed to find a diet that can do all this. So if you wanna go vegan, do this. 
cut out meat, increase produce, grains, and legumes, stick to whole foods and nut milk. If you don't wanna go vegan, do this. Limit the meat two to three times per week, increase fruits and veggies, but still try to stay away from dairy. In the end, the choice is yours.